If I remember correctly, the star wheel went on the inside here. And there was a spring. If you get it, it's usually a good idea to replace the hardware, which is all these springs, but in this particular job, we uh, didn't have that in a budget. You may be in the same boat. But if you have a hardware kit and you're trying to figure out what spring goes to what, notice this one's got a funky bend on it. The reason it's got that funky bend is so that it clears the star wheel when it's hooked in. So you want to make sure that it's able to do that. So if, if this were the other side, it wouldn't clear. So this is the correct spring for this side. Got my short shoe. I can hook it in here. And then sort of put it in just like that. So you're half assembled here before you ever put it on. And get your little hook ready to hook in down underneath and then just raise it up. Oop, we forgot a little truss. If you want to know which way the truss goes, take a look here and you'll see this is stepped just like this is stepped. So you can see that the truss on this one goes in with a spring facing forward and it's stepped in the back. We had a little friend that went over the pin went into the shoe. Outside of that we had our adjuster on the bottom of our adjuster we had our little spring. That spring may or may not be necessary now um, but I'm gonna try to put it in. Yeah. I'm gonna put it in after the fact. You want to put your shoe in the position it's gonna be in when it is nailed down and try to get your nail to come out accurately as possible and it looks like I've never done these before but that was actually pretty easy so I'm pretty happy to see that that worked out pretty well for me so now that I've done the back side I'm gonna go and do the front now if memory serves there were no hooks or anything on this one or anything special I really like these. I'm gonna to try to get my little spring wedged up in here. That really wasn't difficult at all. I just pushed it up in and it was happy. Now, remember our big metal hook went first. And this is where this tool comes in and some of these are different but you see this little indentation here is made for going around the top of this adjuster so you can just go through this spring or what have you get it on its little indent and just sort of lift it up and pull this is the way this is supposed to work. The better the tool you have here, the better off you'll be. Work better not using it. <laughs> okay, you got one in place. Just to give you an overview of how things are looking. Adjuster wheel. Ready to go there. Hooked in. Truss is there. Truss is here where it's supposed to be. That's hooked on. Now the spring hooks into the hole, but now the spring is in position. I'm going to also put my other spring into position. Uh, I'm thinking that might go in here. There we go. You can always, once again, check the old shoe. You can see where there's a rust mark on the second hole, not the upper hole. You want to make sure that this thing is on there tight and can return after the brakes are applied. Super important.
Let go of my ego. Be careful here because those springs have a lot of force. They can and will hurt you. They don't care about you. They really don't. So use the proper tool and use it well. Like I said, I have a, another one of these that I prefer. And there you have it. All right, now everything's together. Push in on the wheel cylinder to make sure that that can work like it's supposed to. And everybody's happy. Short shoes on the front, long shoes on the back. Lots and lots of new meaty shoes. It takes a long time for rear brakes to wear out. I've seen them last over 100,000 miles. They don't do as much of the braking. Only about 25, 20, 30 percent. Now if you're putting new drums on like I am, they're coated with something called Cosmoline. And what that is, is it's a rust inhibitor. It's good that it's there or else you'd pull a rusty drum out of a box. I want to make sure you clean it off the inside. Now the outside is still going to have it on here. And as this thing gets hot, this stuff's going to burn off. It may leave a nice uh, may leave smoke coming out of the wheels and that's uh, once again not a confidence builder if uh, you just did brakes but it's completely normal for the stuff to burn off in smoke. Next you want to fit the drum on. Make sure it spins all nice nice. And the next thing I do is I will pull up on the parking brake. Now this car was nice to me. This is the parking brake cable. Give it a couple of tugs. And what you'll notice, well, maybe you'll notice, but give it a couple of good tugs. And what that does is that will center the shoes inside the drum. It'll work the shoes on the inside of the drum, and you want to get them ready for the adjustment. Now, this is where the magic happens. All right. Everything about your brakes or how your brakes feel, boil down to how well the rear brakes are adjusted. So what you want to do is you want to get that adjustment as close to the inside of the drum as you can without it making contact with the drum. And you do this by turning this wheel. I have special tools for this, but you can't access it that from the inside of this car. Now, I'm turning it now and it feels kind of tight. So once again, I'm going to pull on that cable. And as you can see, it was tight, but now it's not. Now that actually feels pretty good. But I'm going to finish up work on the other side and then recheck it. You want to push in on this when you're checking it because when the wheel is bolted down it sits flush Voila. probably the hardest part of any drum brake job is making sure that everything gets back to where it's supposed to and it moves properly on this particular set of brake shoes they were kind enough to leave me a diagram of how everything goes back together uh, this may not always be the case where you can take a picture or do whatever it is you have to do in order to get everything back and working properly. Okay, thank you so much for watching this uh, drum brake tutorial. Uh, I hope it was helpful to you. I hope you were able to save a couple of bucks, possibly do this yourself, and hopefully uh, all of your digits are still intact. Uh, you can always visit me at ericcarguy.com and uh, post a text or video response to this video and let me know what it is you want to see, what you want to know. I'm Eric the Car Guy. Stay dirty.